Hi folks, HR Funk here with part two of my review and evaluation of the Canik TTI Combat Pistol. If you missed part one of this video, that was an in-depth shop review of this handgun where I took a close-up look at it and told you all about its features and characteristics. And if you missed that, I would encourage you to go back and watch it because in part two, I'm strictly going to be focusing on shooting the TTI Combat and talking about how it performs. In just a couple of minutes, we're gonna head out to the range. And while I'm shooting the TTI Combat, I'm also going to do a little bit of side-by-side -side comparison between this and a couple of other Canik handguns, one being my rival Dark Side and the other being my Mete SF. So let's head out to the range and see how this goes. And as you can see, I've arrived on the range with the new Canik TTI Combat, and in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to start shooting it to see what kind of performance I can get from it. First up is going to be a slow fire accuracy test from a distance of 15 yards. I'll be shooting off bags to try to see what kind of accuracy I can squeeze out of this handgun. Then we'll move into some more defensive drills. So let's get right to it. But before I start shooting, I want to say a big thanks to House of Pain Munitions for sponsoring the ammunition for today's test. I'm going to be using their 124 grain poly-coated ammunition, and this is one of the lines you can get in a subscription. So if you start an ammo subscription from House of Pain, you can have this ammunition sent to your home at the frequency you want and in the quantity you want. And if you do that, you get a 5% discount over the list price of this ammunition, and you can use my discount code on top of that, which is HR Funk, and that'll save you another 5% on your subscription for this ammunition. Now, let's get right into this test and see how it's going to perform in the new Canic pistol. Go see where they hit. Not bad. Four of those five shots from 15 yards are probably in an inch and a half there, maybe just slightly larger center to center. One shot, and I think this was the very first one, is opening that group up to probably about two and a half inches. But this could have been me, very first shot. Could have been maybe just the very first shot out of the pistol going a little off as opposed to all the rest of them that came afterward. So in any case, definitely good enough accuracy for defensive purposes, probably good enough accuracy for most type of match use. And if we exclude this one round, or this one bullet hole rather, then it's extremely good accuracy from that distance of 15 yards. Another quick point before I go on, because if I don't say this, somebody is going to come in the comments section and say, those bullets look like they were tumbling. The paper tears very strangely on this backstop when I'm using paper targets. If I were to take this target off and flatten it out from the back, these holes would all be very round. What you see that looks like it's elongated is really just that strange way the paper tears. So the bullets are not tumbling. On we go now to those defensive drills, starting with controlled pairs from a distance of five yards. And as I start into the defensive drills, I have got the 18-round magazine in the pistol. I have it fully loaded with 18 rounds and one round in the chamber. So along with looking at the accuracy in these drills, I'm also going to be checking the functioning of this pistol as we work our th way through the entire column of ammunition. So let's see how it goes. So not bad with those controlled pairs. I've got basically four out of the six on the heart. For some reason, I pulled a couple of shots off to the left, and that could be where I just need to change this back strap. Usually I have the largest back strap on the handguns that I'm using. I stuck with the medium, so maybe it's rotating a little bit in my hand. I'm not sure. But in any case, let's see what happens as I move on to the failure drills from seven yards. Everything was looking good in the failure drills. I've got five of the six shots that I fired at the body in the center square. Four of the six are on the heart. This one just clipped the edge of the heart. And then I've got one shot just outside that I let get away from me. 
when I come up to the headshots, the first two headshots looked good. And I think what happened on this third headshot that went high, I was looking at this bright fiber optic. It is really bright. It really catches your eye. And I think I was watching the sight more than I was watching where the sight was on the target. And I just elevated the pistol a little bit too much. So this is my fault, not the pistol's fault. And that bright fiber optic front sight really does catch your attention when you're shooting. So just for fun and a little bit of a comparison, I'm going to run those last two drills, the controlled pairs from five yards and the failure drills from seven yards with both my rival dark side and my meta ASF and see how they compare to the TTI combat. Now, both of my handguns have optics mounted to them. So that's going to give them a little bit of an unfair advantage, but I'm not going to dismount the optics just to fire this comparison. So I have the shot holes marked right now with the TTI tactical. The black stickers are the shots that I fired on the controlled pairs. The blue stickers are the shots that I fired on the failure drills. So let's see how the rival dark side does on those two drills. So here we go. Rival dark side controlled pairs from a distance of five yards. I have no idea what that noise was behind me. <laughs> So hopefully you're going to be able to see these shot holes. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six shots. Five of the six are nicely centered on the heart. This one just made it off the heart into the left lung of the target. All of them are inside the center square, so the rival dark side is starting off very well. This is one of the best shooting handguns I own. I don't always shoot it the best, but it always shoots very, very well. So now let's see how it does in the failure drills. And the body shots on the failure drill with the rival dark side are one, two, three, four, five, six. All of them either on or basically touching the heart. And I've got three shots <laughs> basically right on the medulla oblongata right there that were head shots. Those are in half an inch, center to center. So extremely impressive performance with the rival dark side. And just for reference, the controlled pairs with the rival dark side are marked with the green stickers. The failure drills with the rival dark side are marked with the red stickers. Now let's try the Mete SF and see how it does. And those controlled pairs with the Mete SF are one, two, three, four, five, and six. Five of them are on the heart. This one just made it off. It stayed inside that center square, but it's out into the left lung. Now let's try some failure drills and I'll put some stickers on these so you can see them a little bit easier. So if you need to freeze the video, you can. Hopefully these are a little easier to see now than they were before. I use these light brown or putty colored stickers on those shot holes for the controlled pairs with the Mete SF. Normally I would not have used this color on a white target, but since I'm basically putting these on top of other colored stickers, <laughs> I thought they would be well enough to see. So now let's move on and we'll see how that Mete SF does in the failure drills. So I don't know why I didn't think of this before. I can actually put the stickers on as you are watching, and that should help you to see where they are. The body shots with those failure drills from the Mete SF are one, two, three, four, five on the heart. One of them outside the center square into the right lung. And for the head, I've got one of them right on the same area 
which is basically the medulla that I had with the rival dark side. One of them is right at the juncture of the brain stem where it would meet the spinal column. I believe according to Dr. Frankenstein, that's called the pons. There's one for all you young Frankenstein fans out there. Then I had one that I pulled off over here. So this was probably my own silly fault. In any case, remember these light blue stickers and black stickers were with the TTI combat. And truthfully, I'm shooting the rival dark side and I think even the Mete SF a little bit better that I'm shooting that new TTI combat. So what I'm gonna do now is first put up a new target so you don't have to try to see through all these colored stickers. And we'll try a little bit more long range shooting with the TTI combat. By the way, undoubtedly, somebody is gonna yell at me and tell me how this wasn't fair because there's an optic on both the Mete SF and the rival dark side and blah, 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 blah. And they do need to redo this and I'm a terrible person and all kinds of things. But, I'm shooting from five yards and seven yards, and I still shoot iron sights pretty well from five yards and seven yards. So I don't think the optics have that much of an advantage, if any advantage, over that really bright fiber optic green sight on the Canic TTI Combat. A quick point before I start to shoot my 15 yard standing unsupported accuracy test with the TTI Combat, and that is I have switched magazines. I now have the second 18 round magazine with the three round extension, and it is fully loaded with 21 rounds and one round in the chamber. So we'll be able to see what the functioning looks like with that magazine now. And let's get right into this test and see how it's gonna shoot from 15 yards. All right, let's go down range and see where they hit. Nice standing unsupported group from 15 yards. I've got three of those shots touching, one of them just off to the left and one down here. I'm hitting a little high. My point of aim was right in this vicinity right here. And from that distance of 15 yards, I'm maybe two inches high. That's a little odd, but the accuracy is looking very, very good. So let's move back to 25 yards and see what happens back there. All right, let's head down range. Not a particularly impressive group from 25 yards, but I think a lot of this is me. I was just feeling kind of unsteady back there as I was shooting. You notice I was shooting kind of slow and trying to zero in on those sights, and I don't think I was doing it very well. So obviously no problem keeping them on a human size chest from that distance but the group itself would probably be a little bit better if I was having a better day or maybe if somebody else was shooting who was having a better day. In any case, let's move on because it's time to find out if the Canic TTI Combat is a seven yard tack driver. So here we go. I've got a tack and a target. I backed off to a distance of seven yards. I've got three rounds loaded into the pistol. So let's find out if the Canic TTI Combat is a seven yard tack driver. And again, I'm in this area where I got one foot in a hole and one foot that's on a little bit of a rise. So let me move around here a little bit and see if I can get it, something that resembles decent balance. And we will find out. On the first shot, folks, <laughs> the Canic TTI Combat is a seven yard tack driver. And by the way, I think every Canic pistol that I have ever tested has been a first round tack driver, and this one is no exception. So now let's head back to the shop and I'll give you my final thoughts on this handgun. So final thoughts on the Canic TTI Combat. First off, this is a very nice looking pistol. In fact, I would probably go so far as to say that its appearance is almost stunning with all of the cuts and all of the colors and everything else it just looks great but the important question is how does it shoot 
And what I'll say is there are a lot of great characteristics about this handgun that make it a good shooter, one of which is that really bright front sight. I don't know what it is about fiber optic elements that makes one of them appear to be brighter than another, but I can say that the fiber optic element in this pistol really jumps out and grabs your eyes. When I was shooting the up-close drills with this handgun, it really just caught my vision right from the time it came up, and even though a couple of my shots wandered a little bit, that wasn't the pistol's fault, and it certainly wasn't the fault of that big bright front sight, that was my fault. The grip texture of this pistol really is almost too aggressive. I actually recorded the range footage yesterday, and still, as I grip this pistol today, it feels like my palm is kind of abraded from holding on to that. You almost feel like you have to shoot it with gloves on because it's like holding on to sandpaper. Now, if you have really calloused palms of your hand or whatever, maybe you wouldn't notice that. And maybe for someone that shoots hundreds or thousands of rounds in training, their hands just become immune to that over time. I don't know. But I can tell you, I do still feel it, particularly in the palm of my shooting hand. And that could probably be toned down just a little bit. The compensator on this pistol I really didn't feel like it was doing much when I switched from the TTI Combat to the Rival Dark Side to the Meta SF. I didn't notice a tremendous difference in recoil impulse. Now, I'm not shooting for split times. I'm not trying to get the absolute fastest shots off that I possibly can. If I was, maybe I would notice a difference between this handgun and the others, but all in all, I just really didn't feel like the compensator was that much of an enhancement in the overall handgun design. All of the controls, just like all Canics, worked very well. The functioning was 100%, and between a Canic handgun and Mechgar magazines, I did not expect any sort of malfunctions. The accuracy was certainly good enough for any kind of shooting you might use this handgun for. The trigger was good. So all in all, this is a great handgun, but I'm going to get into something right now that's probably going to be controversial and it might make some of you upset with me. And what I'm going to say is for every shooter, there comes a point of diminishing returns with regard to enhancements and accessories that are added to a firearm and that shooter's ability to perform better with those accessories and enhancements. To illustrate my point, what I'll say is, if Jerry Michelek was to loan me one of his handguns that he uses for competition that's all decked out with all the bells and whistles that he uses, I'm not going to be able to shoot that handgun like Jerry Michelek because I don't have his same skill level. So for me, all of the extra advancements of the TTI combat really don't seem to make me shoot any better or enhance my ability to shoot over and above what I can already accomplish if I'm shooting my rival dark side or my Mete SF. In fact, I think I tended to shoot those handguns a little bit better than I shot this one. So for me, it's really not worth the extra, I think $270 in MSRP over and above the price of the rival dark side for the TTI combat because I'm just not getting any more from it in terms of my overall shooting performance. And the Mete SF is something like $430 less than this handgun. So the TTI combat really isn't the right handgun for me, but it's really not intended for me. It's intended for someone who wants a very good looking handgun that they can shoot very rapidly, that's accurate enough to ring steel or whatever they want to do with it. And if that describes you, then the TTI Combat might be the right handgun for you. In any case, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions and comments about this video, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 7% off your purchase from Optics Planet. And remember, House of Pain, both House of Pain Armament and House of Pain Munitions, you can go to House of Pain and use my discount code there, which is HRFUNK, and save yourself some money from your purchase from House of Pain. And don't forget the Target sponsor, folks. Go to Targets Online, check out their inventory, and see if they have anything that's going to meet your target needs. And once again, I want to say thank you to Bill for loaning me 
the Canik TTI combat pistol for these videos. It has been great to shoot this handgun. And again, Bill and all of my viewers out there, you are the greatest viewers on the internet. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.